Welcome to how to enter new inputs. So in this, we're going to quickly go through and show you how to add new custom inputs to your input settings. So in my project here, I'm going to go to edit and go to project settings. And in here, you're going to go down the left hand side and find the input section. In the input section up top, you find the option for bindings. Now bindings come in two forms. You've got action mappings and you've got access mappings. Expand these open, you'll see some of the ones that are pre-built for me. And you can expand these open further and see what buttons have been attired to which one. So what we're going to do here is go through and explain what action mappings are, what access mappings are, and explain how to add your own custom inputs to this. So action mappings, first of all, are basic, basic inputs. They are either you're pushing a button or you're not pushing a button. They're either activated or not activated. And that is basically all they do. Whereas access mappings are measures of how uh, a figure has changed based on input. And we call those analog inputs. So if you think about a joystick on a controller, that is an example of an analog input because you can either push up a little bit or you can push up loads and that value will change based on that input. And these inputs usually range between minus one and one. So if I go to move forward here, you can see we've got W, S, up and down. And these are keyboard inputs. And keyboard inputs, by the way, are digital. So they're either up or down. So this is going to either be zero or one. However, the thumbstick is going to be used as well. And motion controllers are going to be used their thumbstick as well. And they are analog. You'll see they have an option for scale as well down here. More on that in a moment. Before we go on to that, I want to go back to, up to the top and look at action mappings. So in action mappings, we can add into jump here one more extra input on here. So you've got spacebar, gamepad face button bottom, and motion controller left trigger. If you want to add another input to this, we can click on the plus button here and add a new input from the drop down list. And you can see there's loads of options to choose from. You pick whichever one you're looking for. So let's say you're looking for a keyboard input, you search for keyboard and find it in here. If you are using uh, an Xbox One controller, go to Xbox One, you'll find Xbox One specific buttons similarly for ps4 and you'll find gesture ones and so on and so forth there's loads um, you may notice why xbox one and ps4 are quite small lists that's because these are extra ones on top of the normal gamepad ones so they use gamepads uh, uh, general buttons as well as their specific ones here and here so let's add one in here for another keyboard input so rather than just using spacebar, we'll also do left shift. Uh, not left shift, sorry, we'll do uh, we'll do J, just for a bit of fun. So we'll do J, and there you go. Alongside that, you'll find shift, control, alt, and command. Now these are modifiers. What they mean is if I were to tick uh, shift with J, that means shift has to be pushed at the same time as J in order for this to register. Uh, same if I go do control, that means shift and control and J have to be connect, uh, all pushed down at once to trigger the input. So these are modifiers so you can add even more uh, flexibility to your inputs. If I scroll down to access mappings, let's explain what scale does. So scale basically flips the input and output. So let's say for example I'm using a digital input on my analog access mappings, such as W and S. Now W and S are both digital inputs, so they both are going to input uh, output sorry, 0 to 1. However, if I'm walking backwards, I want my backwards to be minus 1 because I'm changing the direction of that. And for thumbsticks, you don't have, don't have to do this because thumbsticks naturally range between minus 1 and 1 based on the direction you pull the stick. So, so for S here, we need to negate that by minus 1 in order for us to make it move backwards. So you'll see this in use in the code in a second. So let's go look at the code ourselves. And in here, if I go to the movement, you can see how access value is changing here. So the access value is going to be scaled based by that scale value. So it'd be minus one or one. Now it doesn't have to be one or minus one, it could be any value you like. However, they're the most common ones you want to do. But let's say, for example, you have uh, a key which makes it force the run uh, into a place where it could also be a walk as well. So the walk key could be a 0.5, so the speed that they move is half, um, whereas the run would be a 1. Okay. Uh, now I said jump, 
as J. So in here, we've got the jump action. And you can see it's input action that refers to the input setting. So input action there and your input axis here. And we can see jump here working if I go into the game. And I'm going to push J. And you can see the jump work with J because I added it to it. Um, and last thing I want to go through and show you is these axis values actually come out as variables as well. So if I were to right click here and do turn rate, not only do I get the axis input event, I also get the axis value. So if I ever want to use this value elsewhere in my code, I can do. Now it's important to note the input axis events happen all the time. They're like a tick. They're either outputting a value of zero or something else. So this is always going on. So to demonstrate that, if I do a print string here, saying hello, we can see that output keep on going. Okay, they always happen. Whereas a print string on the input action events, like jump here, if I put that in here, print string, it's not going to say hello until I push that button. So J, jump. And there you go, right? That's how you add your own inputs to the input settings. Thanks very much for watching. If you want to watch more how-tos and other videos of mine, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Ailey, where you can watch all of my videos well before anyone else. Thank you to all my patrons and my subscribers. If you're watching this and you're not yet subscribed, hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you all next time. Bye, everyone.